In today's video, I'm going to be talking about different ways in which you can improve your revision. And I'm going to be talking about a process called retrieval practice. So retrieval practice is something that we try to do to uh, hack the forgetting curve. And the forgetting curve is this idea that we should revise because if we don't um, look over something after we've learned it, if we don't do anything at all, what will happen is we will rapidly lose that knowledge. So very, very quickly, within 24 hours, we'll lose 50% of what we would have learned after a lesson and 90% within a week. So the, the amount of knowledge we lose happens and goes very, very quickly. So this process that I'm going to talk about is called retrieval practice. It's the idea that it's an active study technique where we try to recall information from memory instead of just rereading notes or textbooks. The whole point is to strengthen your memory and help identify gaps in it. Essentially, the, the brain is a muscle, um, and, and if we want to strengthen that muscle, we need to test it regularly and make it work hard. So this is this process that I'm going to talk through now. The, the, the thing that most students get wrong when they start to revise is that they uh, have to go into it, uh, their, their comfort blanket. They go to their notes and they, and they read their notes quickly just because it gives them a little top up of what they think they should know. And then that means the test is easier. What I want you to do when you practice this technique is the, the biggest tip I've got for you is you, you can't look at your notes. No, don't look at your class notes, your textbooks, your revision notes on your laptop or any flashcards. Uh, the reason why is the harder you actually work to recall the information initially, the stronger that memory is going to become in the long term. So we have to be really, really strict on ourselves and make sure we don't look at notes before we do this process. I've done this process myself just to prove that it can be done. Um, and I've done this with something that I really enjoy. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan who are an American football team. They have a 59, 59 player roster. Um, and I tested myself to see, having watched a lot of games, could I retrieve a lot of information about them? It would be easy just to take their names, and so I decided for a challenge for myself, I decided to take four bits of key information for each player. Names, jersey numbers, positions, and the college attended. I was trying to pull this information that I already had from watching them on TV and reading lots of articles about them from my brain, not adding new information, but just trying to extract what I already knew. That's 236 bits of information because quite a lot of factual recall to do. Uh, but this is a really good example of a test for my brain to see what I can extract in a certain amount of time. How I did this was I set myself a time limit, 20 minutes, because in an exam, we have to extract information within a set time limit. I use picture prompts only. So I had some flashcards with pictures on them. Um, so and then what I did was I wrote down as much information about um, each of these players on a test piece of paper, which looked like this, um, it had the name, number, position and college. So I'm trying to get those four bits of information in a time limit um, as quickly as possible and accurately as possible. After that 20 minutes, I checked uh, the answers against an official source. So when you would do this with your uh, revision, do this against a textbook or um, a, a really, really trusted revision source. Try not to use necessarily your notes. They might not always be completely accurate. Um, I used ESPN here to do this for um, my uh, testing. What, what I found out is that... Um, that, that actually there were some big gap, gaps in my knowledge. And I think one of the things you've got to work out is don't be afraid to make mistakes. So when I checked it against my official source, I didn't actually give myself half marks. I gave it no marks if I got even a little bit of it wrong, because that meant that that, that bit of knowledge wasn't secure enough. Um, so here's the actual table that I did. Everything in green is so that I got correct first time round, and everything in black is the errors. As I said, don't be afraid to get wrong. Um, I made loads of mistakes in this. There's loads of gaps in my knowledge. All the, the, the gaps are actually showing you is what you need to learn next time, what you need to work at. It actually points out the areas you're weakest at. So it's a real gift for you. And this is why retrieval is such a, a good thing to be able to do. What you would do that, um, then is you'd go and review your what you did well and what you did badly. So if I look at this table here, it's very clear to me that the names and positions I did very, very well. <laughs> However, 
I struggled with the numbers and the colleges of the squad. So when I go back and do this again, because I need to do this regularly to make sure that I secure that, um, I would work specifically on um, numbers and colleges to secure that bit of knowledge. I did this test two days after watching a game and got 71%. So I, I made lots of mistakes. There's lots of areas to improve on. Um, but I hope that you can try this out with some revision stuff. And then I'll show you the next stage, which is um, how we would do this regularly. Um, I could use lots of different ways to do retrieval practice. Flashcards is a great example where I've got on one uh, side a prompt. Here it was pictures. And then the, on the other side, it was the key information. These are really good for... Uh, regular testing, good for this kind of retrieval practice, um, as long as you don't look at them um, before you actually go for it. Use the prompts only. Uh, th they can be found on Quizlet. Uh, another big tip is don't spend all your time making them on Quizlet if there's already resources out there. Lots of students spend loads of time making great resources, but they don't actually use them. Another thing you could have used is concept mapping. This is for more complex ideas. I'm a geography teacher, so it's specifically good for linking complex ideas. I've done an example here, but I will do a whole new video on that. So have a go at retrieval practice, see what, what happens, and then follow the next video to see what will be the next stage.